Oh, great, thanks for the opportunity. Um, just to in basic introduction for myself. So I'm coming from a small town on the west coast. This is about 57 k's outside Cape Town called Mom. So I also produced a couple of provincial and international players. Then from personally, um, I'm lecturing full time in, in coaching and performance analysis. Complete my doctorate in 2015. Currently busy with a, another doctorate to to Wales, uh, part of Metropolitan University in Wales. Um, coaching. Then um, rugby wise, a level three qualified coach, um, coach at various levels in, in the Western Cape school level, club level. Also had a, a stint with the Western Province amateur side in 2016. The last two years I've, I've taken a break from coaching um, just to upskill myself and to further my studies. And then also to educate coaches and I'll use this time during the lockdown to, to educate coaches um, and to provide coaches with a platform where they can share ideas and, and share concerns and then hopefully we could we could assist with that um, and that just in a nutshell what I'm doing so but um, yeah education that's my main role at the moment and I think this this was a good opportunity during lockdown to go and reflect on what is needed in the game to take our game forward and there's a lot of issues that we that we need to deal with and then I think it, this is a great opportunity to have that hard conversations because uh, going to have a, another opportunity in the near future and, and years of opportunity to deal with these issues. Yeah. And I think what uh, you know has obviously become something that we're discussing more often and uh, is certainly coming to the news of late is, is just uh, the, the group of coaches. I think the number that, I don't know if it's changed, Wilbur, but 49 uh, former coaches and players coming together in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and just kind of, I guess, highlighting some of the inequalities or perceived prejudices that they've experienced. Can you just provide a little bit more background into the group and uh, some of the, the issues that they've raised? Yeah, so, so the group have increased. So, so it's, uh, at the moment, it's more than 49. I think we, we over just over 100. And highlight from the start, this is not a racial group. It's not something that just for, for color, coaches of color in, um, or black coaches or coaches, minority coaches. So it, uh, we also, the group is open to anyone. Um, um, so we also got a few white guys on, on, on the group that also gave their support. And then they also feeling that the, there's a lot of inequality happening, as you mentioned earlier. So, so I think um, if you just look at, at reality, what's happening in South Africa, um, if you just look at a, at a provincial level, none of none of the Curry Cup coaches, if you're looking at top flight Curry Cup, is black. Um, then if you go to Varsity Cup, two of two out of that eight coaches is black. Um, then if you move to top twenty schools, three out of the top twenty schools is black. Craven Week, uh, not even fifty percent of the coaches is black. So there is a concern, and and and, and it shows the inequality. And again, it's and I want to highlight this. It's not about a race. It's just we want fair opportunities. And, um, and SA Rugby came out yesterday with, with the president, Mr. Mark Alexander, that there's a transformation plan. When will transformation stop being linked to a color? When will, when will we move away that transformation is about improving the system? It's you could think a lot of people will disagree, and but if you look at the comments on the post of SA Rugby magazine yesterday, if you look at the, the post on Facebook on, on the article, so there's a lot of interpersonal ra racism taking place, and there's a lot of systematic racism taking place, and that's the reality. And, uh, and I know a couple of players after the article went viral uh, and the, the press release have received a lot of SMSs and WhatsApps, and it just shows how far we are from creating that perfect or that that unity, um, and, and that was our driving force. Because when when will black coaches be ready if you're not provided with opportunity? Yeah, and sure. we always. And South African rugby, what, what the president is referring to, fast tracking. Why? Why only black coaches? Why are they the, the people or the individual that needs fast tracking? All black coaches want is an opportunity, resources, and support. That's all we want. And. And, and, and the same for, 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 for players of colors, of, of color. And, and, and Craig, when I'm speaking here, I'm just not speaking on behalf of coaches. I'm speaking on behalf of players, um, administrators, coaches, service, even servant providers. 
and, and that, that is a broader aspect that we need to deal with. And, and if you look at the makeup of our rugby agents in South Africa, the majority is white men. And then there's also a concern about for women rugby, and we stand for that. We want to be inclusive. So our drive is, and it's not a, I think in the media it was, it was seen as a petition. It's not a petition. It's just we want to highlight what is currently happening in South Africa. And that's why we state the facts. None of the CEOs of, of, the, of, the, of the franchises are white, are black. None of them. And, and I've read in the media now that Indra Fister is leaving and they, that job is like odd for, for a current player. How can this happen? Um, and um, none of the directors of rugby are black. Um, and, and, and I think that needs to start at, 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 in the, at SARU level, where if you look at their makeup of the strategic position, most of these guys are white men. Why, are, why is it reserved for, for a specific, specific race? And again, we, we don't want to highlight uh, we, it's not a race issue. It's, a, it's an inequality issue that, we, that we're fighting. And, and it's important to mention also that as soon as we start talking about development, we, we see color. And why do need black coaches, black players need development? Why can't we get to a point where we say, that everyone is on the same level, we're going to compete on the same level. And that's what we're fighting for. Um, and I, this, this last couple of weeks, I've heard um, sad stories about coaches being appointed to a Craven Week team. He's appointed as a backline coach, but then the head coach still take charge of that, um, charge of the backline because they don't trust um, co coaches of color. And we are qualified. And, and, the people that is on the, on the group that sign are qualified. They have academic degrees. They're highly qualified in rugby. So why do we need development? Why can't we just say, this is your opportunity. We'll support you with all the resources. We'll provide you with support um, structures and we'll provide you with human resources in order to do your job. But at the end is, um, we, you need to be fast-tracked. You need to a long-term development plan. Why? Why can't it be the same for every individual? And, and that's what we, we're standing for now. And again, is the influence of sponsors and, and they have a say in who gets appointed, how they get appointed. And that for me is a sad reality of what we live in. And that needs to change. And, and, and we need to move away from, um, as soon as we, there's, there's a transformation plan with the targets, when will we get to a point where we move on to that? And I see they've extended now to 2030. We, we re entered Unity in 1992. And, 30, and we're still struggling with the same issues. It needs to be put into action on. We can't just go on targets, targets the whole time. Um, and if you look at the numbers, and, and the reality is black coaches don't get appointed because people don't trust their abilities. People don't trust their skill set that they bring to the table. Because we still believe that rugby belongs to one race. We still, if you look at the comments on, on what's happening on News24 Network, the Network for Internet, Facebook, on, even on your post last night, uh, African man, we still got a long way to go, but there's no better time than now. We've got time to go and reflect. And, and my issue that I have with the, play, the people that send me these messages and send some of the individual on the group these messages, they, they listen with the intent to defend themselves. They don't listen with the intent to understand. Um, and and, and more, uh, the president said that there's going to be a fast track in the mentoring system, but have they spoken to any coaches of colors on what their needs are? So now it's a top-down approach. You, you want to implement this because you want a fast track coaches. But what is, have they spoken to any of the, the, of the people on their needs? And again, we can't put the blame solely on, on, on SA rugby, but they in charge, they govern in rugby in South Africa, so they need to take charge of the unions. And, and say, you're not meeting the targets. If you don't meet the targets, this will be the effect. And these systems need to be in place. Same with schools. The same with your, your provincial school or rugby. Um, and, and we often refer to we meet the targets, but are they? None of these coaches of color are getting put into head coach positions. So their makeup is normally they put as a manager or assistant coach, and then we're meeting the targets. But as soon as you become an assistant coach or manager, you're not in a strategic position to drive change. And that's what we, you know, I don't want to use the fight, but that's what we 
we're striving towards is where these coaches can come in a position where they can drive change. Because a union doesn't speak to an assistant coach regarding um, certain players, they speak to the head coach. And um, if, you know, if the head coach is not a person of color, change won't take place. And, I'm, and again, I'm, I'm excluding the guys that are open for change. And, and there's a lot of people that are open for change and a lot of people supporting this drive. But the majority of people needs to change and we need to educate. Because at this time, and, and you've seen the drive with, with CSA cricket, with South African cricket, with uh, what happened with Assel Prince. Uh, you saw what happened on, on the first day of the first test between, between South Africa and, and England, or West Indies and England. So there's a lot of education taking place, but we're not putting them into action. And um, again, um, my, my plea for the people is to stop, listen to defend yourself. S start listening with the intent to understand where we come from, why we are unhappy. Because there's a lot of hurt out there. And, and, and there's a, and I've, I've, as I read in the comments, they say, uh, yeah, you must just get over it. How do you get over something like this? How do you move on if the same thing keeps on happening? And that's where we are. And again, we, there's also um, the same with women's rugby. Um, and then the statement goes, oh, yeah, but there's a lot of blacks playing women's rugby. So that is creating inequality as well in its own. So why aren't white ladies playing rugby? And that's where we need to move on. Why don't we have female administrators in rugby? And that is where the inequality happens. That, that image needs to change. And this is the best time and this is a great opportunity to change that.